federal judge handling Tom Brady's attempt to overturn his four-game suspension strongly suggested Brady and Roger Goodell appear in court on August 12th and 19th. U.S. District Judge Richard Berman told the sides Friday he requests the parties meet on both of those dates and engage in comprehensive good faith settlement discussions prior to the conference on August 12th. The 12th is the day before the Patriots preseason opener versus the Packers. Now on the 19th, Brady will be in West Virginia with the Patriots for a joint practice with the Saints. Earlier in the day, the NFL and the Players Union said they wanted Berman to resolve their dispute over Brady's suspension by September 4th, six days before for the Patriots opener. Brady versus Goodell in court. Skip, who wins this one? I hope Tom Brady does. I believe Tom Brady and his legal team will win in court, Stephen A. Smith. Unfortunately and obviously, the NFL with its preemptive strike won round one by securing the fact that this case will not be heard in a pro player court, that of Judge Doty in Minneapolis. Instead, it, the case will be kept in New York City, where I'm sure the NFL has lots of friends in high places, unfortunately. But if this judge, Richard Berman, and the magistrate now appointed to mediate, if either one of them have a modicum of objectivity, I believe they will quickly see how the NFL has railroaded Tom Brady, and I believe framed Tom Brady with zero credible evidence. And Stephen A. Smith, I believe the NFL has, has very adroitly and shrewdly used many members of the media to wrongly convict Tom Brady in the court of public opinion. We heard over the weekend how New England is now releasing a lot of emails that it sent early on to the league because the league had, had used some members of the media to report facts that were not facts, that the footballs that they found that night at the AFC title game were two pounds under regulation PSI, when in fact and in truth they were barely under the legal limit, if at all. That was number one. And then in Roger Goodell's report upholding the four-game suspension, as we all know now, in red letters, red flashing letters. It said in that report with a headline, Tom Brady destroyed his cell phone, when in fact, and in truth, they already, the NFL, had the text of that Jastrzemski. They had all the text that Tom Brady sent Jastrzemski. And obviously none of those were incriminating. And in fact, as Tom Brady pointed out in his Facebook page, Early on in that process, he was told by the NFLPA and by his lawyers, Jeff Kessler, that no way would you ever be forced to, to surrender your phone in this process to the National Football League. So it was irrelevant, it was a moot point, and yet Roger Goodell used it as his case-closing argument against Tom Brady, who has been wrongly conv convicted in the court of public opinion. So in the end, it appears to me that Goodell has actually destroyed the reputation of Tom Brady in order for Goodell to re-strengthen, rebuild, maybe even save his own reputation, and obviously to placate a lot of his owners and his bosses who wanted the Patriots penalized and punished for what they believe was all the past cheating done by Bill Belichick. Tom Brady is paying for all of the above wrongly convicted. I don't believe he had anything to do with anything involving these footballs except to tell his equipment men, I want them on the lower end of regulation, period, end of the story. And I'm hoping that judge can see this clearly enough, quickly enough, on the 12th and the 19th, that if nothing else, Tom Brady will be granted the injunction that they are seeking. <clears throat> well, first things first, um, some teammate you are. Because let me tell you something right now. When we go to the New England Patriots camp on Friday, um, I'm, here, I'm requesting here on national television, I need extra security because I'm clearly going to be all by myself. <laughs> I, got, I got to deal with the New England Patriots, okay? Even though they're wait, first class organization. Wait, I thought, I, I, I thought I Mr. Kraft, doesn't Mr. Kraft love yeah. you? That's what that, you always that's, say. That's my man. I, I, I wouldn't say, no, no, no. Yeah. I say I love him. 
I don't know how he's feeling about me right now uh, because Tom Brady is his guy, and obviously I've taken the positions that I've taken. But let me be very, very clear, although some people will label it semantics, I want to be very, very clear about what I've repeatedly said. And that is the flake gate has been much ado about nothing to me. I didn't care if Tom Brady was throwing nerf footballs. Doesn't take away from his greatness. Nor do I want him, per se, to be suspended for four games because that means he wouldn't be back until week six because they got a bye week in between. And for me, Skip Bayless, the first, weeks, first six weeks of the NFL season without Tom Brady at this point in his career is not a good thing for any of us as fans. I mean, it, 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 it takes something away. From the NFL season to not see Tom Brady in uh, playing football on a Sunday afternoon. So you got me there. But I, I lean back on what I have repeatedly said to you. And I will stay firm on this position till the cows come home. Roger Goodell, regardless of what you want to go through as it pertains to courts and, and judges and all the things that they say, in the end, what transpires during those collective bargaining negotiations and what is written down is what they term the Bible of the NFL. You're not circumventing that. And Roger Goodell has the power to exercise the judgment, to, the, the judgment that he handed down. He has that power. Now, the judge would like them to come to a conclusion because the judge probably feels the way that you do, Skip, or the way that I do. It's either unfair to Tom Brady or, in my case, as much ado about nothing. But in the end, when we get to the legalese of the matter, Roger Goodell's the commissioner of the National Football League, and he deemed and labeled Tom Brady's behavior uncooperative. And the fact that he has leaned on that to make his judgment is something he can't circumvent no matter what. Now, keep in mind that I still believe it's possible that it'll be a two-game suspension. It'll get reduced from four to two. But you have to remember that you sat up there and you said, under no circumstances, would Tom Brady accept anything other than complete exoneration? And I said to you, that is correct. no way in hell. Because he's not getting that. He's not getting complete exoneration. So, at the end of the day, what if, what if they sit up there and Roger Goodell and Tom Brady and those guys, if, if, if they reach the conclusion, all right, we'll sit there and we'll slice it down the middle two games. You trying to tell me that Tom Brady's going to say, hell no, I'm not taking anything, it's all or nothing, and leave that up to a judge? Would this collective bargaining agreement this Players Association agree to? You really think he's going to do that? We'll see. We shall see. I think he will do that. And remember, even though he's obviously a member of the Players Association, and as you say correctly, they signed off making this commissioner, as we keep saying, judge, jury, and executioner. He has final say on these matters. They handed it to him in exchange for some other compromises at the, in the 11th hour of those last negotiations. I get all that. But as a United States citizen, you know and I know this man does have some rights of fair or unfair sort of labor practices, the procedure by, where, by which you incriminated him. And he is, he's fighting, he, he just shows you with every action, I am 100% innocent as charged, which is why his reputation is at stake here. He, he's seeing himself now as the sacrificial lamb, and I think we should point out, he turns what? 38 years old today. Happy birthday, Tom Brady. And I think Goodell saw him at near the end of his career, maybe the greatest quarterback ever, was someone you could sacrifice for the, the, the betterment, for the, the, you know, sort of the good of the National Football League, because they needed to stop the cheating in New England, so let's get the quarterback, the Super Bowl MVP. Well, well here's the deal. There's no question that, in my opinion, Goodell picked the wrong person to, to, to set an example with. I mean, Tom Brady, I, I, I've been on record saying that there's no way in hell that Tom Brady deserves the same length of a suspension as Greg Hardy. I mean, to just even though one yep. has nothing to do with the other, deflated footballs compared to domestic violence, it's not that. In the end, if Tom Brady is going for four games and Greg Hardy is going for four games or two games, that is going to be a travesty. 
There's no other way to slice it because that's how Joe Public's going to look at it. They're going to turn on their TV one Sunday afternoon, and Greg Hardy's going to be playing in a Dallas Cowboys uniform. And if Tom Brady isn't allowed on a football field for the New England Patriots, people are going to lose their minds because they're going to really, really have a problem with that. But with that being said, keep in mind, again, what we come down to is what Roger Goodell deemed and labeled uncooperative. And what you have to own is that Tom Brady did a horrendous job of defending himself before Roger Goodell's initial judgment came down. And then afterwards, all of a sudden, here he wants to, here he wants to come, you know, full throttle in defense, in, defen in complete defense of himself. You were a little bit late to that party and you contributed yep. to forcing Roger Goodell's hand. That cannot be escaped on the part of Tom Brady. No matter how innocent he may be, he did a horrible job of defending himself. That's on him. Okay. <sighs> Yet, in the end, Stephen A. Smith, this is such an outrageous travesty, and I believe that's the way Tom Brady's viewing it through his eyes, that if, in fact, he gets shut down in court, they go nowhere, four games suspension upheld, I throw this out as a potential end game. I know it is highly, highly unlikely, but given the principle and character of Tom Brady, it's possible he would consider retiring. I know he loves well, his Patriots. I know he loves football more than life. You know, it's just what he is and what he does. But it's possible he would just say, you know what? Heck with all of them. I'll quit. I, 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 well, I brought that up a couple of weeks ago. And you I did. said to you, you did. What it, I said that would be incredibly profound. If, if, if you're Tom Brady and you feel the way Skip Bayless has been describing you feel based on what your sources yep. told you for the last several weeks, you know what, Skip, mm -hmm. even if he came back for 2016, what if Tom Brady wanted to send a message to the NFL and to Raj Goodell and everybody yep. else? I'm sitting out the whole season. Robert Kraft, you took this deal which further put me behind yep. the eight ball to begin with. And all of this it stuff did. that I've had to go through, you know, I got the super wife. I got the supermodel wife. There's a lot. I got my beautiful children. I've, I've got enough money. I'm going to sit out the entire year. Hell with y'all. I, I think that would be very profound on Tom Brady's part. But based on what we saw first day of training camp, the rock star that Sal Palantonio described him to be, I can't see him doing that, yep. Skip. He loves the no, game I'm, too I'm much. I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I got you.